Hey all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer. Today we've got an awesome video for you that goes over the top 6 claw and fist weapon builds in Elden Ring. Before we continue though, a quick shout out to ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is the VPN I use and trust. There's a discount link in the description below and 3 extra months free. For number 6 we have Cypher Pata, a powerful holy option to use for your pure faith build. The Ash of War unblockable blade goes through shields and does solid damage as well. This weapon is also weightless and scales only off of faith, making a perfect sidearm for those using incantations often. Cypher Pad is quite good even for a weapon that does pure holy damage, which obviously is decently resisted. Cypher Pad is still a solid option. The yeah, unblockable blade is definitely something you gotta try too. If you want something that's weightless that can go with your faith build while you're casting different incantations, this is definitely a good option for you. As you can tell here, you can get good damage out of it with just a couple of buffs, and then obviously using the Sacred Scorpion Charm and the Holy Tear as well. This is one that some people will use for PvP too because it's weightless and it can go through shields, but as you can see on screen it works fine for PvE. We took on a side boss, but it is New Game Plus 7. I think they have around 20% holy resistance, but even so, they took good damage from Cypher Pata as we were able to take them down fairly quickly. And while it's probably not on my list of favorite weapons, it is really fun to use. For this we have Cypher Pata plus 10. Any seal will do. It doesn't really matter what armor we have on, but we hit 51 poise. Shard of Alexander. Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Sacred Scorpion Charm. And then we have the Holy Tier and the Faith Tier as well. Let's get into stats for this one. For stats, it's a purely faith based build, so you can pump up your faith a lot. But if you want, you can go around 60 faith or so, still get decent damage at it, and then put some stats into like strength and dexterity and run different incantations and different faith weapons, like the Blasphemous Blade and such as well, while also having the same stats for this build. Yeah, all around a solid weapon that you can use and throw in different incantations because you're pretty much going to be a pure faith build. And next up at number 5, we have the Iron Ball. This does a lot of posture damage and hits extremely hard. If it weren't outclassed by another one later on this list, it would be even higher. If you're looking for a non-bleed fist weapon, this is great for damage as charge attacks stack up the damage numbers very quickly. This is a really good build if you're looking to break posture too, as you'll find yourself getting frequent breaks. Pick the iron ball up if you want to beat up some bosses with a fist weapon as this is a solid choice to build around. Yeah, if you're looking to really get a lot of damage out of charged attacks with a fist weapon, then the iron ball is really solid. As you can see, you can pretty much get chunk damage with the charge attacks as we're stacking stuff here, and they continue just to break posture and hit bosses for a lot of damage. And even the Magma Worm, who's not that tough, even though it's new game plus 7, he, he does have a decent amount of HP, but nothing extreme. He takes good damage from the Iron Ball here. You can see the charge attacks, the amount of damage. There was actually a posture break at the end there. However, he ended up dying anyway, so it didn't matter in the end. And we were able to take him down with the Iron Ball. For equipment, we have the Iron Ball, preferably plus 25. I was using Craig Blade on it. Any seal will do. We hit 51 poise. We had the Dagger Talisman, because you're going to get those critical breaks in. We have the Ritual Swords Talisman, Axe Talisman, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, and then we have the Faith Tier to add some buffs, and then we have the Charge Tier as well. Let's get into stats. First stats is a strength focused build. We have an A and heavy affinity, so we're going to take advantage of that to get a lot of damage. You saw the charge attack damage you can get from the Iron Ball. They go best in heavy affinity, and then focusing pretty much mainly here on strength, 60 vigor as well. At number 4, we have a variant out of what's normally a bleed build as we saved the Blood Claws for later in this video to show off something cool you can do with Raptor's Talons. Now the Raptor's Talons have a C in Flame Art, and we threw Flaming Strike on them for a lot of damage. And as you can see here, we're able to get a really good amount of damage on Margit. We just took on some side bosses. I think we took a main boss on later in this video, but it was just a small video that I wanted to do on Fist and Claw weapons. Anyway, we did good damage to the Margit and the Outlast Plateau with Flaming Strike and then building up on successive attacks. Having them in Flame Art, the Raptor's Talons really shine. They're a solid weapon if you want to use them as a Faith build. A little bit of a variant on the normal type build, but it's pretty awesome to use them this way. Yeah, I was surprised at the damage I was able to get with them in Flame Art, but we have the Raptor's Talons in Flame Art, preferably plus 25 with Flaming Strike. We hit 51 poise. We have the Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Fire Scorpion Charm. Then we have the Faith Tier and Fire Tier. I was using Market Shackle, by the way, for those wondering what that is. And we're going to get into stats now. 
So for stats again here, we're faith based. You can do this as a pure faith build, get a ton of damage out of it in flame art, and then you can throw in any incantations you like or any type of faith build, Asian Dragon, Lightning Strike, anything with that. And you can kind of combine those builds together to make a solid build around the Raptor's talons in flame art. I want to quickly show an additional clip here, by the way, what you can do with Flaming Strike against some of the tree avatars in the game. If you're interested in absolutely destroying them, you can do that even with the Raptor's Talons, despite them having not a lot of range, because Flaming Strike goes really well with them, and it can turn into a really powerful build. Yeah, this is a really good combination. I didn't really think of this combination until now in terms of using this with Claws, but the fact that you can put Flaming Strike on it gives you a little bit of an advantage, and it's going to give you some additional range with Claws, as you can see on screen here, so you can take advantage of that. Now, that's the easier tree avatar on Caleb, but even so, we got to admit that the damage there is quite good. The damage that we got from Flaming Strike while using Claws is substantial. That's definitely something to check out. And next up here, at number three, we have Bloodhound's Claws. This is due to their solid scaling and heavy affinity and the ability to put blood flame on them for even more damage. These are awesome claw weapons and possibly the best in the game for pure damage when not factoring in status effects. Bloodhound's claws are certainly something you'll want to try if you're looking for a claw weapon that can build up a ton of damage and get 100 bleed with the base mount that's 60 in blood flame blade that adds 40 more they make for an excellent build. Yeah, as you can see on screen here in the combination with Blood Flame Blade, we're able to get a lot of damage. It's only Godric after all, but he is decently tanky when you get the, you know, the last scaling journey, which is New Game Plus 7. We're able to hit him for a decent amount of damage and bleed build up in combination and take him down fairly fast. By the way, if you're following at this point and you're not sub, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. You're not going to want to miss out on all the awesome Elden Ring content we've been doing on this channel lately. It's been a ton of fun. We're going to keep at it and then continue the game through DLC, obviously as well and I can't wait for equipment we have bloodhounds claws in heavy affinity we had endure on them we have the white mask we have dragon communion seal Melissa's prosthesis lord of blood's exaltation rotten wing sword insignia dragon crest great shield talisman faith tier and thorny tier as well let's get into stats now for stats, we're strength focused once again because these scale really good in heavy affinity, so we put a lot into strength. We're able to get good damage out of them and good amount of bleed as well with Blood Flame Blade. At number two, we have the Star Fists, which are a step up over the Iron Ball. They do solid damage with the charge attacks, but the benefit here is that you can add Blood Flame Blade for 85 total bleed as well. These are probably the best overall fist weapons to combine both damage and bleed, although they won't be number one on the list, they're still up there. You can build around the star fist well too, since it's great heavy affinity with an A, which can give you awesome damage as a strength build. You can pick these up in the capital by the Colosseum, and once you get them, you'll likely find yourself using them more and more. I'm not the biggest fan of fist weapons in general because of the short range, but even I will admit the Star Fist are great, as is number one on this list as well. People may already know what number one is, but there's really no spoilers there because if you guys check the descriptions of my videos, I always list them anyway because everything's timestamped exactly as is for your convenience, so you can go right to where you need to in the video at any time. And we're going to take Radon on New Game Plus 7. We're going to take on Radon with the Star Fist. We're going to try to get in as many charge attacks as we can. Try to build up a little bit of bleed as well and see how much damage we can do. Yeah, the Star Fist are something that I'm coming to like more and more. I realized how powerful they are. They definitely are a step up from the Iron Ball. Although I think, I'm not sure if they do the same posture damage. The Iron Ball seems to do more for me. Maybe it's just, I'm, I don't know, I'm getting better hits with it, but... Yeah, you get good posture damage out of the Star Fist too. The bleed buildup though is what absolutely brings it over the top and makes it beat the Iron Ball. Now if you're doing a successive attack build, I still recommend number one on this list, but also Bloodhound's Claws over this because you're going to build up more bleed in general. But if you're going for charge attacks with the addition of bleed, the Star Fist are pretty much perfect for that, which still does add up to a lot of damage overall. You're going to get a lot with the combination. And Radon is going to go up so he can come back down as a Meteor, and what he does, we're going to rush him and try to finish him off with Charge Attacks. As you can see, we did get a Bleed proc in there, even using Charge Attacks, and for a lot of the bosses, you're going to build up Posture Damage too. Alright, time to run over to Radon and try to finish this battle as quickly as possible. Radon's not too challenging of an enemy, though he does hit hard. There we got a really powerful Charge Attack, and we were able to finish him off with the Jump Attack, take down Radon, the Star Fist build. 
And as you can see, that was relatively quick too. It does stack up damage fairly fast. The Star Fist is a good option for that if you're looking for a powerful fist weapon. Let's get into equipment here. Now for equipment, we have the Heavy Star Fist. We have Heavy Affinity Star Fist, Bloodhound Step, I think is what I was using, the White Mask, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Axe Talisman, Faith Tier for buffs, and then we have the Charge Tier as well. Let's get into stats. Now for stats, this is another strength focus build, so you can pretty much pump everything into strength. We have 60 vigor as well, a decent amount of endurance. You don't need a lot of mind with this build, but overall another strength focus build for this one with the Star Fist in heavy affinity. And number one on the list is the easiest one for me, and that's the Venomous Fang. After the buff to Claws in 1.09, these have been more powerful than ever in PvE. The Venomous Fangs are now incredible and extremely powerful. They're amazing in Blood Affinity, allowing you to proc both Kindred of Rod's Exaltation and Lord of Blood's Exaltation for 40% more damage just from those two talismans alone, and then another 10% from the White Mask or the Mushroom Crown. These are easily number one on my list as I find myself going back to these a lot. You can get these in the abandoned cave which is early too. In the room before the boss where you get the golden scarab, the venomous fang are a powerful weapon that you can get really early in Elden Ring. And for equipment we have the venomous fang plus 25 preferably in blood affinity. We had royal knight's resolve, white mask, and then we have lord of blood's exaltation, rotten wing sword insignia, kindred of rot's exaltation, Melissa's prosthesis, and then we have the thorny tier, faith tier for buffs. Let's get into stats. Now for stats on this one, this is a dexterity and arcane build. It will actually show that it has a C in both dexterity and strength, but it leans more towards dex. So pump more into dexterity and then go with 45 arcane to meet that cap that it has around 45. Thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed my list of the top 6 claw and fist weapon builds in Elden Ring. This was a fun one to do as I don't use these that often, so it's cool to mix it up. By the way, I've been dealing with a tooth infection that's been kind of rough. Hopefully this gets cleared up soon. It's been going on for way too long. But anyway, that's why I sound the way I sound. Be sure to hit that sub button though for more Elden Ring content. And as always, thanks for watching. Appreciate all of you guys.